Hello, I am Matt Minnick, and this is Bengals Chalk Talk. Today, we are talking Joe Burrow. This is actually part two of my two-part series on perhaps Joe Burrow's favorite plays. So, a little history if you missed the first episode, which you can check it out later. You can certainly keep going with this one. Uh, there's no knowledge in there that uh, that is required, no prerequisites uh, to move forward with this video. Uh, but Joe Burrow told reporters recently that the Bengals asked him for his 10 favorite plays from the LSU playbook and that they were going to look at those plays. And if there's there are things that aren't currently in the offense, that they might look to put them into the offense for 2020. So I don't know what Joe Burrow's favorite plays are, but I've, I've watched all of his film uh, and I'm going to take a, take a guess. So these are 10 plays that I think could be Joe Burrow's favorite and plays from the LSU offense that I would love to see the Bengals running in 2020. In part one, we talked about some goal line passing plays as well as some deeper shot plays. And in part two, we are going to talk about RPOs and some air raid passing game concepts. So we'll start with the RPOs, all right? RPO, run pass option. Okay, so just like any other option, the quarterback is making a read, but now it's not just simply hand off or keep it. It's not just simply pitch or keep it Uh, like in other forms of option. uh, He has the option to either give the ball or to throw the ball. So here we see Clemson has six defenders in the box. All right. Four down linemen, two linebackers and LSU has six players to block them. Okay, five offensive linemen, and then one H back. All right, their tight end is in an H back, you know, wing position here. So, if this is the box that Clemson's going to give them, they can run the ball all day. Where it becomes a problem is if Clemson inserts another player into that box, LSU cannot account for it. Okay, so who else can go in the box? Well, really anybody. All right, the only player that really couldn't is this corner up here at the top of the screen. He's way too far away. It'd be ridiculous to try and blitz him. All right, there's a another receiver in the way here. It doesn't make any sense. All right, it's not that's not sound defense. Uh, but these other players can. Okay, the nickel corner, absolutely, he can come. This safety, he he can come into the box. Another safety in the bottom of the screen, he can insert into the box. This boundary corner, all right, on the single receiver side. They could blitz him, all right? They could send him on a corner blitz. So these guys could go into the box. And what happens is now they'll have seven defenders and only six players to block. But wherever that extra player comes from, LSU is going to have a favorable matchup, okay? If it's one of these guys on the top of the screen, all right, now they'll be two for two, all right? So it's main coverage out there. And LSU is going to like their odds there with the the skilled players they have. All right. On the bottom of the screen, same story. Right? They blitz this corner one on one with the safety. All right. They bring the safety down into the box one on one with the corner. And that's what we're going to see on, on this first uh, clip. All right. So as you can see, we're going to get a mesh. All right. We're going to get a mesh run action here. All right. And where are Burrow's eyes? They're in the defensive secondary. So as this safety rocks down, he knows he's pulling the ball and he's throwing the ball. And that's where it goes right in there to that receiver, okay? Now this ball gets knocked down, right? Not not completed, but right where it should be. And you can see the possibilities, man. If he catches this and the other safety responded pretty quickly, but if he, he can catch that, split it, run up the field, there's an opportunity to gain a lot of yards. So let's talk about the other possibilities with this, all right? Now we'll see the other safety rock down in the box. Creates one-on-ones on the two-receiver side. So we get that quick little quick little post slash slant. <laughs> Makes the catch. Takes it upfield, breaks a couple tackles, and into the end zone. Also against Oklahoma. They tried it with a nickel. All right, now there's a lot of space here between the safety and that slot receiver. Burrow's going to see this. Burrow sees this. Zips it in there. First down. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Whichever one of those players, they want to put another guy in the box, Burrow's going to take advantage of it, all right? They try and stop the run. 
Burrow takes advantage. He gets the ball to one of his receivers. So what if they say, all right, fine, we're going to take care of the pass. Well, then he gives, gives the ball. And we're going to see that in this look against Florida. The safeties stay high. The nickel stays wide. And they give the ball, and it's a long touchdown run. All right? So, hey, you don't want him zipping in those balls to, to Tyler Boyd and A.J. Green, John Ross, T. Higgins. And you try and play with a light box against Joe Mixon, they're going to give the ball off. All right? So, look, like we said before, six for six now, right? This is another backer in the box. This is the uh, safety who's a little bit deeper. All right? So, the attack is coming out here. There's going to be a double team, a combo block here between the center and the guard. Look at Cushenberry. His eyes are up on that Mike linebacker, okay? Now, because it's an RPO, he's not getting up there as quickly as he would be if it was a pure run because he's he's got to he's got to wait. You know, he's got to make sure the ball's not thrown. He's not an illegal man downfield, all right? So he ends up not actually getting to that, uh, to that player. The guard, all right, blocking here on the defensive tackle, and then between – the H-back tight end and the tackle, we've got two for two in the backside. Again, nobody ends up getting up to that linebacker, but he's far enough away. It doesn't end up mattering. They got nobody extra over on that side, and that is a touchdown for LSU. Now, this is really conceptually the same play, but it's run a little bit differently, okay? So, number one, we look at this formation, and we see it's different, okay? Why is it different? Because there's not that H-back. It's a trips formation, true trips formation with a split out receiver on the back side. So now they only have five players to block. Five players, all right? And then how many players are in the box? Well, right now this guy's kind of on the fringe. So you almost have six, you know, to start with. But when this back goes in motion, he's going to have to gain some width. So now we've got five for five. Problem is we don't have a running back. That's okay. You got Joe Burrow. You got a quarterback that can run, Okay. So Burrow can threaten them with the, with the uh, run and still read that safety. This is the same read that we saw on the first clip. Okay, same exact read. Now Burrow takes a step up field, threatens the run. The safety comes up, and look at that window that opened up there. Boom, zips that in there. All right, while running forward, just zips that ball in there for a completion. All right, and moving the chains. Awesome play. Now, this is cheating a little bit here because this is this is another RPO. This isn't really the same concept, but I'm calling it one because you know I told you I was gonna give you 10 plays from LC's playbook, but trying to trying to sneak in another one here. All right, so this is a different RPO. Again, it's out of a trips formation, all right, with three receivers spread out to one side and one receiver spread out on the back side, single back in the backfield. This time we're not gonna do anything with that back though. All right, so let's see. RPOs, really a lot of things in football, but RPOs are all about the numbers, okay? So where does the offense have numbers they like? Well, not down here, not in the box, all right? Not in the box because they've only got five guys to block, and they've got four down linemen, two linebackers. That's five on six, all right? Advantage Florida, all right? On the bottom of the screen, they've got one corner. They've also got a safety that's favored in that direction. That's two on one, advantage Florida. So where does LSU want to go with the ball? They want to go up top, all right? Three on three, all right? Three on three. That means you got to trust your dudes, you know, expect your, your guys to run good routes and make some plays there, all right? Find the holes in it. So this is where you want to go with the ball right now. But the defense doesn't have to stay like this, all right? So this is an RPO because they're going to read this near backer, okay? Right now, they want to hit number three on the hitch. And that's what they do. Whoop. Zip it in there to them, all right? But what is a threat to that? Who is a threat to that? It's that near linebacker. On the snap, if he buzzes out underneath that immediately, it could be a pick. All right? That's how they can take away that matchup. So Burrow's reading that guy. Now, some of you are probably saying, this is not an RPO. Where's the play action? Well, watch the running back. All right, that is not what a running back does in pass protection. Anytime you see a running back step in and stand straight up, that is a tailback draw all day. 
All right, that's a draw. Now they have run this exact same RPO with the true mesh, all right, with that true play action look in the backfield. But I threw this one out there on purpose because it's an interesting look. It's a, it's a look that you don't see every day. All right, so that was the dead giveaway for me, right? You see that step? That's a draw all day, all right? And good backers should know that. That's a draw all day, all right? And the other thing too is if you look at the way uh, the center's playing, Cushenberry, right? He's he's not looking for a blitz. He's not looking to help out with these guys. It looks like they probably use some help with this guy, right? He's biding his time because again, he's got to make sure the ball isn't thrown, all right? He's got an internal clock in his head or something, or he's reading the linebacker. I'm not sure how they, how they work that, but he's got to figure out if the ball's being run to get up to this guy. Now his eyes are on the mic, and you can see him late, kind of starting to think about working up to that guy. So that's an RPO, and it's a different way to run an RPO, but it's an RPO nonetheless. So where can you get the one-on-one -on -one matchups? I mean, really, that's what these, these RPOs that I'm talking about today are, are all about, is where can we get a one-on-one? -on -one? All right, we don't want a zone. We don't want three and two. We don't want two on one. All right, we don't want uh, that extra defender in there. Where can we get a one on one matchup? Because we know our guys can win. The Bengals have an excellent receiving core, especially if all these guys can stay healthy. AJ Green, John Ross, T. Higgins. All right, and of course, Tyler Boyd. That is two first round picks and two second round picks. All right, that is awesome. That is a great group of, of receivers that they have in there. All right, and these are ways to get them the ball. And if you want to take that away, Bengals have Joe Mixon too. So this is an awesome play, a great concept to be able to utilize your tools and really make the defense work against themselves. All right. Hey, they can take away what they want to uh, take away. Uh, but a play like this and RPOs like these, they're going to be creating those opportunities for the offense. And you just got to have a trigger, man. You got to have the quarterback that can recognize it and they can distribute the ball, get the ball where it needs to be. All right, so the next play we'll talk about is the shallow. So here we're gonna get vertical routes on the outside, and we're going to get an under and a dig underneath. Okay, so the tight end here, he's in an H-back alignment as he often is. He's gonna chip and run the under. And the slot receiver is going to run a dig. Okay. Now this is really where they wanted to get the ball. And he's got some adjustments that are, that are built in for him. But a couple of key things here, right? One route I didn't mention is the running back. He's got a play action fake and he's heading out wide in the same direction that that dig is, is heading towards. Okay. So what does that do? It takes this flat defender and gets him out wide, right? Now there's something threatening the flat. It's close to the line of scrimmage. So he gets wide and he gets closer to the line of scrimmage. So really that isolates the dig on the hook player, this guy right here. He's playing a little bit tight. He is he is gaining some depth, but he's playing a little bit tight to the formation. So right there, he gets past and gets into perfect window. Great window to throw the ball into. These are balls that... Joe Burrow loves to throw these balls. He's great, super accurate with these intermediate range balls over the middle. All right. And the Bengals have a lot of guys who are great at these too. Tyler Boyd in, in particular is going to do really well with routes like this. So a lot here depends on the safety. Okay. So the safety, actually, there's two safeties. One rocks down and becomes that flat player. He gets out wide. So Burrow knows he can he can go uh, to the, the dig with the ball, all right, based on the read of that linebacker, okay? But it also depends on the high safety. What's the high safety doing? Now, he could jump that right away. And what if he does, all right? What if he jumps that route? Really, if, if the linebacker plays on that route too, if that route's gone, anytime they're in a single high look, Burrow can take the outside. All right, and he's done that, and he's thrown some deep ball touchdowns to the outside. All right, and especially with this, this deep safety. If that deep safety decides he's going to be super aggressive on the dig and he's going to jump that thing, okay? You got a one-on-one -on -one here. You got a one-on-one -on -one here. Go win.
All right. And LSU had had some excellent, you know, skill players, some excellent receivers on the outside. Guess what? That's going to be AJ Green. That's going to be T Higgins. All right. So the Bengals have some guys out there too that can do some stuff. So put the ball up there if that's what they want to do with it. Now, what if it's a, it's a too high look? Like, all right, let's say it's cover two. This guy stays up high. They split field, right? Now, if those guys stay up high, all you're worried about underneath now is the linebackers. Okay. So now you have a high low. Cover two, you have a high low. All right. And if those safeties are staying high, then really it's two for one on the outside on both sides. You don't love that. All right. You don't love uh, that matchup necessarily. So you want to work the high low. So ignore this linebacker. All right. Because, well, actually, ignore the safety. So this guy isn't here. He's back. All right. So now if there's only three linebackers underneath, they're going to look at where these two cross paths over the mic, right? And they're going to do a high low uh, on the mic backer. To make that even more obvious, the receiver is going to read it. And when it is cover two, he's going to kind of bend it. It's going to be more like a kind of like a post, more like a like a like a bender, like a vertical route that's going across the formation. And he's going to split it. All right. So now we've got we've got some matchups. All right. Now we've got a situation where the safety, he has to either play tight to take away that, that route, all right? Or if he's gone, if he's still staying out there over the top of the of the receiver, all right? If he's out there wide, that's when you go into this guy. Again, he's going to be coming a little bit deeper on that, all right? If he decides to play this, that will create a one-on-one matchup on the edge, all right? And the simplest version of it is you do have a high-low here, all right? This is the point where you want to hit it. You have that high-low, all right? Again, this this, you know, these backers will be a little bit shifted in, in a different coverage, but you have the high low and either, either they're playing back underneath this guy. Maybe somebody's running with him in Tampa too or not. And if, and if they're, you know, dropping deep, you hit underneath and you gain some extra yards on it. So uh, very, you know, very diverse concept. You can do a lot of different things out of it. This is the same exact thing out of a three by one set. All right. And with a lot of, a lot of things you can do on a multiple formations and multiple looks. So once again, we've got the H back tight end. What's he going to do? He's going to chip release. And that's going to really help out the timing. A lot of these chips, obviously they're great for pass protection, but a lot of the chips that LSU use in their offense really make the routes time up well. All right. So now these two are like truly stacked. So if you're going to play that high low, like you're in a much better position to, to play it right here because they're running side by side with each other instead of just kind of having that moment uh, where they're where they're crossing each other in a two by two formation. OK, so this is just another way to be able to do the same thing. All right. And again, this is a one high look. If it's one high. All right. And, and you know, bro ends up taking off here. But if it's one high. You can take one of those outside receivers if you want them, all right? That's going to be a pretty far throw. I've seen Burrow make it. That's going to be a pretty far throw. But this one to the boundary isn't that, isn't that far, all right? Read the safety, play off what the safety does, and you can take uh, you can take the deep ball on that, all right? So this is something that you can run out of different formations, uh, out of some different looks. Works really well with Burrow strength as well as the strength of, uh, of a lot of the receivers that the Bengals currently have on the roster. All right, now this is a concept that I really like. Uh, this is called cross. Now, at first, this may seem pretty similar to some of the things we've seen already, okay? We're going to have this number three receiver. It's a trips formation, all right, a loose trips formation. Uh, we're going to have the number three receiver. He's going to come across the field, all right, similar to, to a dig route. And we're going to have the single receiver. He's going to look like he's running an under, but he's not. As you can see, he stops and he comes back. So this gives you that levels, all right? That levels concept, that high-low look uh, from those two receivers, all right? Uh, the number two receiver on the three-receiver side, okay? He's either going to follow right along on, on a dig or he's going to get vertical, okay? The reason he gets vertical here is because the safety stays low. The safety stays low, he gets vertical, if the safety gets high, now that it opens up this area here, he's going to come in right behind it. All right, so we'll come back to this play in a second. 
All right, but I'm going to go to a different play from the same game here. All right, now you see a lot of cover one, and I love this against cover one. Just watch number three here. All right, just watch number three. It comes across the formation. There's nobody there. All right, why? Because that corner went with that underneath route, right? And now there's nobody there because it's cover one. The deep field safety, you know, stayed really deep. Wide open. Now, what is this number two receiver doing? All right, he's matched up man to man, right? And he runs the dick. Now, if this safety jumped that, there'd be nobody in the middle of the field, right? So that's why this guy's coming right along in behind, right? He gets low, he takes it up. All right. And now, uh, you know, now that's where, where the ball should go. All right. So we'll watch the single receiver. All right. Once again, you see him, he's coming across the formation. The corner jumps that. All right. And then he's coming back. You get the, uh, you get the high, low look there, but the ball's already out. And that's a, you know, that's a great look. Now this is, I believe Thad Moss here. So this is a tight end. All right. But that can be John Ross. You know, you give John Ross the, the ball uh, with nobody in front of him, hit him in stride, moving full speed. I could be a very, very big play. So we're going to take a look back at that, that first clip we looked at now. All right, now they do some different things here. First of all, this is a really, really cool little defensive wrinkle they did. All right, they jumped that route by, uh, by the single receiver with the safety and let the corner drop off. They're trying to steal this. And it's really smart. LSU doesn't fall for it, though. Why? Because you still have that high-low, right? You still have that high-low. That's why he's running. You can't jump, you can't jump that with the safety. Why? Because he's just going to come back. Boom. Catches that. And they're gaining some yards. They get him on the move. Now, what does that number two receiver over here do? Okay. Again, they're trying to bait this. They're trying to take this ball, right? So the linebacker goes with him right away. This safety is staying on top of it. And then they're coming underneath and trying to steal the ball with the corner. they got three guys really trying to take that route away. All right? Guess what? There's no safety in the middle of the field anymore. All right? So what does this number two receiver do? He's vertical. All right? I mean, let's get the ball here, right? <laughs> so that's, that shows you. I mean, that's just another option there. That's another great option that they have within this. So... There's some big play potential in this play. I would love to see the Bengals incorporate it. Uh, and I think, again, it works to the to the strength uh, of Burrow throwing these balls, these accurate balls over the middle, and uh, being able to get the ball to some of these playmakers that they have uh, at the receiver position on the move uh, to rack it up, you know, to run after the catch and, and gain more yardage. Uh, that's going to put them in a great situation, help them score some points. All right, the next play I'm going to talk about is follow. Now, this is something you see in the air raid. You also see it out of West Coast teams. So we're going to start at the top of the screen here. It's a three-by-one formation with the back offset to the single receiver side. And we'll start with the back. He's going to, he's going to flare out to the flat, all right? He's just going to shoot right out to the flat, all right? Now, the idea in zone is that he's going to pull the flat defender away, okay? That allows the offense to isolate the hook player this is actually man coverage that we're seeing here all right but that's why they do that to isolate that area and then they're trying to create a high low on the hook player okay so the receiver lines up really tight and he runs an out route but it's not like a like a speed out right he's getting to the out and he's letting this under get to him so they can create that high low now, this is man. Okay, this is cover one. And you see there seems to be a little bit of uh, miscommunication here where they've got two guys jumping the running back in that route. All right. But in man, offenses love to hit these little under routes, right? Because it's, it's a real fast hitter. Sometimes in man, you're getting pressured, so that's good too, all right? But – because it's so low and as fast as it's coming inside, it's really hard to be in good position on that. And that's why a lot of teams will do like Clemson does here and exchange it. 
right? It's still man to man, but you would think that he was going to be man here and he was going to be man here. He takes that first in cutting route, right? He gets on that thing real quick. Uh, the other thing is in, in cover one, generally, right? There's an extra player here because they put two guys in the running back for some reason, right? But there should be an extra player in cover one sitting right in here, okay? Everybody realizes cover one means there's one deep field safety, all right? Most people know that. Uh, that's where it gets the name. But there's also, unless they're, unless you're blitzing, unless you're bringing, uh, you know, a five-man pressure, at least, there's an extra defender, all right? An extra linebacker who's going to match up on those types of routes coming across the middle. All right, so even if you're not fully, you know, exchanging it, he sees that, he'll jump it. So that's why we have the dig coming in here, right? That route gets jumped. They're man over here, okay? If the dig can, you know, run a good route, break, get inside leverage, he's going to be open. And that's what they have right here, all right? So good job there. They don't, you know, they'd have the high low against zone here. The under is jumped. So they go to that dig. All right. Again, working across the middle of the formation. These are throws that Joe Burrow is excellent in that and, you know, delivers with, uh, with great timing, great placement and allows guys to gain yards like you see here after the catch. All right, the last play we're gonna talk about is drive. Now, some people call this mesh, I call it drive. That's just the way I learned it. That's what the people I, I learned it from called it. So, uh, but we're probably taking talking about the same basic thing here. This is an empty formation, all right? It's an empty bunch formation. So we actually have the running back here, the tight end here, right? You see a lot of empty formations out of LSU, but it's generally 11 personnel. You're not really seeing five wide receivers uh, you're seeing their 11 personnel. They just use these guys in you know different diverse ways. So we'll start with the drive. All right. And that's going to happen actually between the running back and the tight end. Now they run into each other here. Obviously that's not what it's supposed to be. All right. But as we've seen uh, the tight end looking to, to get a chip to help out in pass protection. All right. And then, After a little delay there, he releases out into the route. Now, the way this should work, okay, basically these two are supposed to cross each other very tightly, right? They're not supposed to run into each other, okay? And one of them should be the driver, right? Meaning that's the person that, that sets the point, okay? Uh, and, you know, generally you'd say, so the running back's going to go to two and a half yards and the tight end's going to go to three and a half yards. So that leaves a yard in between them, right? But... The top guy will be the driver. So we'll say the tight end is the driver. He's trying to get to three yards, and then the running back's got to play off of his route. So that will create that, that mesh where in man coverage, you know, you should have what you got out of the offense here, people running into each other. And you see these linebackers kind of getting a little mixed up with each other too. Okay? So in man, you cross – and you keep running. You stay in the move because you're in man coverage. All right. Hopefully that creates some space for you and you try and get the ball out there. In zone, you'll sit down in the zone. You'll find a soft spot in between the routes. You're not going to run yourself covered. So that's the first uh, aspect of it. Now there's also a high low component in here. So we see the number one receiver here is running that dig route. Okay. And you can see the linebackers aren't dropping off. Now, this is a uh, cover two man look, all right? So that's when those guys aren't dropping off. The safeties are dropping off. And that creates the throw here because the number one receiver is able to break inside, right? Hard for the corner to try and play with inside leverage in that bunch formation. Because he's playing inside, he's got some room. He's able to make the catch and, uh, you know, get that thing upfield, get some yardage on that. Okay. Now, generally, when you talk about mesh as a play, right? So there's mesh zone, mesh drives as a concept. We, we see a little bit here, right? But the play, generally, it, it is more spread out. You've got a hitch from one receiver, and then you've got the back uh, is is 
flaring out into the flat. So you're trying to create space, right? The, a lot of stuff in the air raid is about using the width of the field, right? So you're trying to use the width of the field and create space for those drives to have, have room, you know, to, to get the catch uh, or to sit in the zone. You're trying to create width. They actually do it the opposite here. It really helps out the levels concept. They're trying to get depth. So the number one receiver up here releases vertically, right? To the corner okay that is something that this deep safety has to think about he's got to account for right the other receiver we haven't talked about here in the bunch all right right at the point of the bunch there he's heading vertical right up the seam all right right up the middle of the field so that's something the other safety's got to think about if they're in cover one that's something the deep middle safety's got to think about so you've got the drive below, which linebackers have to think about, could get them sucked up, right? And you've got these vertical presses, all right, pressing, you know, if it's if it's cover three, the corner out here, the deep third corner getting pressed out. So now there's nobody over there. And the deep middle uh, of the field safety. Or if it's going to cover two, you're going to get both safeties pressed deep there. That's going to open up space. And now we, we, we really have a high-low still, right? And you're not you're going to worry about the the safety having an impact on that or sitting on that route because they've got other things pressing them so you can hit that dig. So again, another great concept, right? These over the middle, all right? These intermediate throws over the middle. These are things that Burrow is great at. These are things that Tyler Boyd is great at. All right? I don't know if we're talking enough uh, about what a great match Tyler Boyd is for Joe Burrow and some of the things that Joe Burrow likes to does. Uh, likes to do in his accuracy over the middle uh so these are five more plays all right from the lsu playbook things that we've seen lsu do that would be a great fit for the Bengals. again if you missed my previous video go back and check it out we talk about some some uh, great pass plays goal line pass plays uh and some you know some vertical stretches as well uh so you know the Bengals are are talking to bro they're trying to tailor this offense around him uh, definitely have a lot of playmakers on this offense so it is an exciting time to be a Bengals fan and see how all this uh, all unfolds and hopefully some of the things from these two videos uh, are things we're seeing on Sundays this fall uh, scoring a lot of points for the Cincinnati Bengals thanks for checking it out